Okay everyone, B Agent Dyer here. We're going to do the in-depth review of this Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3. It's a 15 inch premium business laptop and we're going to have a look at the features of this computer as well as the temperatures and fan noise and the performance of the computer and we'll have a quick peek of the internal so stay tuned for that and I will be putting timestamps along this video just so you can skip to the different sections that you'll be interested in. Now first off we'll have a look at the specs of this computer what it can be configured with. Now we're going to get started off with the processor so it is using the 10th gen Intel core and you can configure either with an i5, an i7 or an i9. Now as for RAM wise you can go up to a maximum capacity of 64 gigs of RAM and that's running off two sold dim slots so you can actually upgrade later on if you want to. And as for storage wise it does have two M.2 slots as well. As for graphics wise, of course, it's got the Intel integrated graphics and it does have a discrete GPU as well. And that is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti. Now this is the Max-Q version of the 1650 Ti which is the more the power saving version of it, but we'll see that in the performance and how that performs. As for the display wise, there are four options. Two of them are Full HD and the other two are UHD, which is 4K. So we'll start off with the Full HD. So there are two of them, which is 300 nits of brightness or the 500 nits of brightness. Now they don't have touch and it is a matte sort of feel to the display. Now as for the UHD version, the 4K version, you do have a 500 nit brightness one. Now that does have touch and it probably is a glossy screen because I also noticed that it does support the Lenovo Pen Pro. So I've never actually had a Lenovo Pen Pro. One day hopefully Lenovo sent me one to have a test uh, and also a 4K version that actually can support it as well. But it does support styles on that 4K touch version which is interesting and there is a non-touch version of the 4K which is rated to 600 nits of brightness. Now it does come with a 720p webcam. Now you can get it configured with an IR version of it which will help with Windows Hello or Express Login and both of the webcams will come with a privacy shutter which is made of a flick of a switch and you'll see a physical shutter go over the lens and you'll see it go red just to signify that there is something going over the lens so it won't actually have prying eyes uh, which is really good so you don't need the blue tack or electrical tape there now i do hope in the gen 4 version that we actually lenovo will give us a full hd option to this webcam because we are living in the next century here so it would be nice to actually get a 1080p webcam we are doing more content creation and also doing a lot more video conferencing there so i do hope in gen 4 that we do get a full hd option this is a recording from the 720p webcam from the x1 extreme gen free. This is the video and audio unedited so you can actually hear and see what the quality of the 720p webcam is like. Now as always I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my street lights turned on and also the room lights turned on as well. Now I'm going to turn off my street light and you'll see this adjust for my ambient light. Now I've got four down lights currently, two in front of me and two behind me. Now the two in front of me is quite far away so there's actually not that much light on my face. And I will actually consider this as a dark environment. So if you're in an office environment, you should actually get a lot more light than what I'm currently have. So this is the test of the two extreme, good lighting and also pretty poor lighting. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this video and audio of this 720p webcam. Now again, I'm going to turn on my studio light back on so you can actually see this adjust. And of course, better lighting has better picture. Definitely put a comment below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are this 720p webcam. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the right hand side of the computer, on the right we have the security lock slot and then two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and that is USB Type A ports and on the right does power share and then we have a full size SD card reader. And looking at the left hand side of the computer we've got the AC power port and then two Thunderbolt 4 ports that is USB Type C and then a full size HDMI port which is version 2 and then we have the headphone jack. There are two speakers located on the bottom front of the laptop and when I tested out the maximum volume of the speakers it managed to measure in at a peak of 76.9 decibels and I must admit I was expecting a little bit more higher volume but 76.9 is quite happy if you take it to outdoors and you're doing a presentation out in the cafe or coffee shop that will still be 
absolute fine. Uh, I was just expecting a little bit more considering this is quite a little bit larger laptop there. As for the sound quality of this computer here, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Uh, it does have a bit of bass. It's not like crazy amount of bass but because uh, it is only two speaker system there but it does have some bass. has good separation between the bass, mids and highs. Uh, it does lack a little bit on the highs there so that could be improved and it has a very good acoustic so overall I am pleasantly very happy with the actual sound quality of these two speakers that it has. Uh, it does have Dolby Atmos so that's pretty good there. As for the battery it does come with an 80 watt hour battery and it does support rapid charge which means you can charge the battery from 0 to 80 percent in one hour's time. And this takes just over about two hours to charge the battery from 0 to 100 percent. The power adapter that comes with the X1 Extreme Gen 3 is 135 watt power adapter. Now that power adapter is actually quite relatively small and is quite light and if you do get the i9 version of the X1 Extreme, it comes with a 170 watt power adapter instead, just to charge to provide enough power for the i9 version. I did perform the battery life test on this particular unit, and I tested in the four different modes. So in best performance, I managed to get an hour and 20 minutes, and in better performance, I managed to get an hour and 25 minutes, only a little bit better, and in better battery mode, it managed to get two hours and 30 minutes and in battery saving mode it managed to get two hours and 45 minutes and in my media mode it managed to get four hours and 15. Now I must admit I find these numbers quite low and I was expecting better numbers from this battery here even though I do know it does have a discrete graphics in this particular unit I just expected a little bit better but my workload is a consistent workload and you should actually expect much better numbers than I do as your workload will probably go up and down and you won't be hitting all the resources of this computer at the exact same time. So I'm just giving you the worst case scenario but even then I just find it a little bit low for 80 watt hour battery. That's just my thought. As for the temperatures and fan noise of this computer, when I put this computer on load I found most of the heat was located near the top center of the keyboard, specifically between the T and I key. Now that's unsurprising because of where the processor and the discrete GPU lays underneath there. Now when I took my measurements, my ambient temperature was 27 degrees Celsius. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 37 degrees Celsius with the fan noise hitting a maximum of 30 decibels. Now that's practically quiet to me. And then I put the computer on 20% load, so that's average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web, and I found the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 49.5 degrees Celsius with a maximum fan noise of 31 decibels. So still very quiet. And then I put the computer on 50% load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 52 degrees Celsius with a maximum fan noise of 32 decibels. So still practically quiet. It did spin a little but that's still very quiet. Then I put the computer on 100% load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 58 degrees Celsius with a maximum of 42 decibels for the fan noise. But most of the time it sat around about 38 decibels but of course it peaks at 42 decibels. Now that may sound a little bit hot, 58 degrees Celsius, but the keys was at 48 degrees Celsius. So that's still very touchable there. I also measured the bottom back cover of the computer and the maximum temperature found there was 60 degrees Celsius. And of course it had a peak of 42 decibel for the fan noise. As you can see, this computer does run a bit hot, but it's actually not bad at all. Now, especially with the keys on it hitting around about 48 degrees Celsius and the temperatures on the palm rest, you really don't feel that at all. So you can actually quite happily work away on this computer while this computer is running on load. So that's fantastic to see the thermals of this computer here. Let's have a look at the behavior and the performance of the X1 Extreme Gen 3. Now this particular unit is configured with an i7-10750H processor with a base clock speed of 2.6 gigahertz. So I've got this computer on pretty much a load for both the processor, RAM, hard drive and also the discrete graphics which is the GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q and that's been on load for just under six hours here 
and I can see the processor here is running pretty much stably around about the 3 to about 3.2 gigahertz and that's pretty stable there uh, for that so which means it's above the 2.6 gigahertz which means it doesn't have thermal throttling which is fantastic uh, but it does have a bit of turbo throttling which is kind of expected there and as you can see here with the current core temperature it's hitting around about 80 degrees and it's pretty much stable all along there so that's pretty good to see that this is doing pretty well for the cooling here now the cooling scheme I've got at the moment is on best performance so it's able to run at its high speed for the fans we're going to examine the burst speed and turbo boost of this processor so we're going to take note of this speed value here and I'm going to put the processor RAM hard drive and the discrete graphics on load and we're going to start the stopwatch at the exact same time if possible anyway so I'm going to start off now and start that off and we can straight away see it's just going to start its load up so we're up to about 4.17 gigahertz and it's pretty much maintained that 4.17 it's gone up to 4.9 very quickly uh, and we're now just slowly dipping down very very slowly to about 4.7 13 now it's bound to 4 gigahertz yep still well back up to 4 point I can hear the fan spinning right up there now and now we hit about 4 now it is connected to mains power and we've got 4 gigahertz here so let's just touch that there barrier and I was just going to show you the core temperatures here so you can actually see it's just come back down just to cool itself back down and it's just hit 3.2 9 gigahertz and that's around about 50 mark and at one minute mark we're still going back up to 4.7 gigahertz and one minute mark and we're just gonna I can just see the, the CPU is just now keeping it steady around about 90 degrees Celsius so it's just gonna be traveling up and down I'm taking a guess from this so I'm going to keep this running for just another 30 seconds just so you can see what's going to happen with the processor how it's just going up and down um, it's not getting thermal throttle for the clock speed it is getting thermal throttle from the turbo boost so as it hits that 90 degrees it's going to go back down try and bring itself back down again uh, the fan is going quite high at the moment but it's not annoying fan noise here and it's doing pretty well I must admit so it's still maintaining that 4 gigahertz and then it's come back down to about 3.8 just to cool itself down and I can probably see it fly back up to about 4 I would not be surprised by so yep there it goes back to 4 so it is just bumping up between those two values 3.8 oh now we got down to about 3 gigahertz and now it's starting to stabilize to that 3.2 gigahertz and it's pretty much and the fans just come back down now so the fans actually come to a less it's probably a right I would say around about 34 decibels and it's just going to maintain this sort of speed at around about two point at the two minute marks just come back down there pretty much the two minute mark it's going to sit at here that spinning the fan crazy high at the moment so and it's going to look like it's going to sit here just like I did in the six hour test so that's kind of what you kind of get at around about the two minute mark and that's going to just pretty much stabilize at 3.2 here hope that helps you guys out so let's turn our attention to the keyboard now it does have of course the famous ThinkPad keyboards it's got great tactile feel good key travel as well and each keys is very smooth that I've got which is the backlit one now to have the backlight it's a matter of function spacebar and of course there's three settings off medium and high now you can get a non backlit version of this and you more than likely will get a more of a rougher texture to the key, each keys uh, just to let you know about that and of course we've got the video conferencing on between f9 
to F11 and also you got the customization button on the F12 as well. And of course with the ThinkPad keyboards, the function keys on the very left. Now this is very normal, this is, I've had it for a very long time, but you can switch this in software, in the Lenovo keyboard software, or in BIOS, you can actually switch the function key and control key around if you're not very used to that. Now the power button is separated, it is on the very right here, so it's outside of the keyboard, which is great to see, uh, and also the fingerprint reader, which is an optional, which is also on the very side. Now I do wish they actually put, they've got a lot of space to even have a full size keyboard. So I do wish they actually had a number pad on the 15 inch because this is 15 inch. It's got plenty of real estate to do that. Uh, there is a lot of wasted space on the, both sides. I think they could have put a full size keyboard in there with the number pad because we do put a lot of data entry for this particular type of computer. So it would have been nice to see them, but it is just a normal keyboard there. Now, and there's not really much complaints in terms of the keys that's currently there. Now as for the trackpad, of course it is great trackpad. It's got a bit of matte feel to the trackpad there and it's mechanical at the bottom and it is of course multi gestures as well too. And there is the, what I call the cheese spot or the keyboard nipple or it is called the track point which is a very old thing they've had and it's actually been used by a lot of people still I've been told and of course you've got the three buttons located all below the space bar to support the track point there. Looking at the color gamut coverage of the display it measured in 80.2% sRGB coverage 57.9% Adobe RGB coverage and 60 0.9% DC IP3 coverage. The display I have in this unit is the full HD non-touch display which is rated at 300 nits of brightness so I'm going to raise the brightness to 100% and I am using my XY i1 display tool to take the measurement and this is the measurement we need to take note of which is current and is measured in candle per square meter and one candle per square meter equals one nit of brightness. So at the moment it's reading 311 to 313 candle per square meter, so that is going over the 300 nit of brightness which is great to see and just to help the photographers and videographers I'm just going to bring it to about a value of about 65 here on the brightness level and you'll find you'll hit around about the 119 which is around about 120 is what ideally you want uh, and for those who really want the 100 I'm just going to bring that down to about 60. Uh, 60 is about 104 and 59 you get about 101. So that's the values you want. So the display has been color calibrated using the XY-I1 display tool and I just want to quickly show you on the color shift if there is any after calibration of the display. Now this is the full HD non-touch display and it'll rate it at 300 nits of brightness. So this is what it looks like out of factory from Lenovo and this is what it looks like after calibration. So I can definitely see this color shift there. So I'll just do it again out of factory after calibration. And what I think it is, it's going a little bit more cooler and also a little bit more magenta there. Um, so if you can just, what would you suggest that would be? Uh, but I think it's gone a little bit more cooler and got a little bit more magenta for after calibration. So I'm just going to quickly show you mid-tones there. So this is out of factory, after calibration, out of factory. And I'm just going to kind of show you quickly on pastel. So out of factory, after calibration, out of factory. And on the color, so out of factory, after calibration, out of factory after calibration. I'll just quickly do the black and white as well too. So I'll do all two of them. So high key, so out of factory, after calibration, out of factory, after calibrations. It, black and white doesn't seem to be that bad on performance. So out of factory, after calibration, out of factory, after calibration, that's not too bad at all. So hopefully this will help you guys out on that. But if you're serious about colors, I do advise you to get uh, color calibrator that would definitely help a lot. So let's have a look at the light bleeding on the display. So I'm just going to turn off my studio light and this is what the display looks like with the light bleed. It's actually pretty good I must admit. It's actually not bad at all. There's not that much light bleed on the corners of the display or the sides of the display. That's pretty good. Please put a comment below on what you think. As for the display it does have a bit of bezel on the top and bottom, but on the sides, 
it is what I call quite narrowish. Uh, it is a 16 by 9 display. I do hope in Gen 4 they do put a 16 by 10 in there because I'm starting to like the 16 by 10 ratio. Uh, and so overall, it's not too bad of a display. Let's have a look at the internals. So first off, we just need to undo the Phillips head screws. They're pretty easy. And then the easy way to actually remove it is actually stick your finger underneath the ledge here and you can pretty much lift it up. It's actually really easy. You don't even need a tool for it. And then just lift it up and then just pull it backwards and you'll be able to get that out. Now straight away we can see what's inside here. So first off, we've got the two slots of M.2 for the storage here, and then two slots, sold in slots for the RAM. Now I've got one stick of 32 gigs in this one. And as you can see, I've got some space to upgrade as well. Now, of course, the heat sink and the heat pipe, and you have the processor and the GPU here. Now, I've also noticed how this works. Now, initially from my unboxing video, I thought the breathe holes were through this central point here, but it's actually not. The breathe hole is actually through these two fans. These two fans suck in air down this way, and then, of course, the heat sink, and then pushes back out that way. So that's how the airflow works. And we've also got the WAN slot down here, and of course, the battery. Uh, over here now you can disconnect the battery through here now I know this battery is connected by four screws held down by four screws that is and I've just lift this up just so you want to, for the people who want to see what's underneath here there's not really much to see as you can see and of course we also got the CMOS battery connected by this one here as well too. I did perform the benchmark for this X1 Extreme Gen 3 now this particular unit was configured with an i7 10 750H processor with 32 gigs of RAM and 512 SSD. Now, of course, it has the GTX 1650 Ti Max Q discrete graphics. And I'll put up the scores for Passmark, City Bench, 3D Mark, PC Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Geek Bench, Spec View Pref. And also include some gaming benchmarks from Eugene, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Immortal Phoenix Rising, and Far Cry New Dawn. Overall, the Lenovo X1 Extreme Gen 3 is a great computer. It's good performance, it has very good port selection for sure. I really love the port selection on this computer here. And it's got a great keyboard. I can't fault the keyboard. It's I love the ThinkPad keyboards. Same with the trackpad, great trackpad, good size as well too. Display, not too much complaints. It is still very good uh, display there. But overall, I do wish they had a better webcam on there, but still, it's still a decent webcam on there. In an upcoming video, I will be comparing the Lenovo X1 Extreme Gen 3 with this. Now, this is the, its probably competitor, which is the Dell XPS 15. Now, this is the 9500 version, uh, so this is a direct competitor to this one here. Now, this is my daily driver that I use, and it has pretty much the exact same specs of compared to this Lenovo X1 Extreme Gen 3. So this is going to be a great comparison. The only difference, one of the big differences of these two for the discrete graphics is this runs off the Max-Q. This does not run the Max-Q versions. It's just the 1650 Ti version. So that's going to be something to look forward to. And of course, you're, this is my actually daily driver. So I actually run this off here uh, and I'll tell you my thoughts between these two computers in that video there. I hope you found this video informative, enjoyed it, or even just to support my channel, smash that like button for me it does help me out and of course if you haven't done already subscribe to my channel hit that subscribe button bottom screen i do try to upload a new video every week and just remember imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting i'll see you next video